Greetings to you wherever you are. We hope that you are keeping as well as possible in these crazy times. Now is the time to lift up the name of Jesus and worship him. So come on, let's get up off your sofas, put your hands together. We're going to do it like the saints who go marching in. Come on, here we go. One, two, three, oh, what the saints go marching in.
For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus, to all generations, for ever and ever. Amen. Um, Andrew, what's what's this upload all about then? It's off this new Christmas album, right? Yeah, so the Christmas album is called See the Greatest Story. There's, it's a, a Christmas EP. There's seven tracks on it. One that you showcased earlier in the year, Sing Standing, which will be the big sing song that you're coming to. You're going to be one of the guests of honour. Yes. Um, and um, the other one is this piece called To You and You. And it simply says, we wish you a Merry Christmas to you and you. And it's got the, the pointy things as well. And we wish you love, peace, hope and joy to all the people of the world and that's all it is and it's it's youthful it's fun and we want everyone to to get involved we want it to take a life of its own we're going to ask the mayor the people from public health all the councillors wouldn't it be great if her majesty also joined in but anyway we dream <laughs> i'll see what i can do producer nicole's got a little black book she's probably got queen liz in there somewhere <laughs> but um, it's meant to put a smile on people's faces so hopefully it's not too early and Not at all. Uh, hopefully it will catch on and just bring a little bit of joy at this time. Now, I'm really lucky that I've had the chance to listen through this album, and it is just joyous. 
It's oh, beautiful great. stuff. And great Andrew, stuff. it's it's been a pleasure talking to you again. Hopefully we can get you and the gang in the studio sometime in the future. Oh, that'll be awesome. Henry, that thank would. you so much for all you do for putting smiles on people's faces. Appreciate oh. it. Oh, Andrew. Yeah, you're making me blush. <laughs> um, I think it's only right, though, that you introduce this upload, Andrew, so take it away. Well, for all those listening, we just want to introduce this song to you, to you and you. It's our wish for Christmas that you will find the real meaning for this season, love and joy and peace that comes from the Saviour being born and bringing us hope beyond this life. Yes, yes, and yes. That's Friends of Cedar Church to you and you. Our first upload of the evening. It's never too early for a Christmas banger. Psalm 119 verse 14. I enjoy living by your rules as people enjoy great riches. Bye. Psalm 119, verse 14. I enjoy living by your rules as people enjoy great riches. Amen. 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 Hello, said the church. Psalm 109, verse 14. Which day? I enjoy living by your rules as people enjoy great riches. Bye bye to the church. Hey Jing Young Dream Big. This week's challenge is not just for you, 
but open to everyone. I want you to write a letter to someone who may not have had very many visitors during lockdown. We're very fortunate that we have technology in our lives and have been able to keep in contact with everyone through Zoom and phone calls. But not everyone is that fortunate. Some people don't know how to use technology and therefore have been left alone. I want you to write a letter to your neighbour, to your nan or granddad, or anybody else that you can think of that may not have had very many people seeing them during lockdown. Get out your pens and paper and write them something nice to cheer up their day. Thanks very much guys, I'll see you next week. Bye! Thank you so much for your donation so far. As a church we are committed in continuing to support our local community. However, we still need your help. If you would like to make a donation or give your tithe or an offering, you can do so on our website. Use the Give Online link in the description below. Luke 6.38 says, Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, press down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap for with the measure you use it will be measured to you so i encourage you give happily and give generously thank you and may the lord bless you good morning cedar church it's great to have this moment to speak to you. I'm so sorry we couldn't be there, Sarah and I, in person to be in your wonderful church. You've got a fantastic church in the city of Birmingham. We love uh, being with you all at Cedar Churches, like being with family, really. And uh, we love Andrew and Sarah. They're such great friends. Uh, Andrew is one of my best friends in the world. I talk to Andrew often and and Sarah and the girls, we, we, we love you guys, we love your pastors, and I want to encourage you to look after them, look after each other in this season, another season of lockdown for, for the UK, uh, especially England, 66 million people this is affecting, but we, God still sits on the throne and we still believe that God is able to do all that he plans to do. Well, this morning I want to talk to you uh, on the topic of courage. And under courage, I want to talk to you about finishing strong. That's right, finishing strong. You know, be determined that you would finish strong. It's not just a, oh, I hope I finish strong, or I feel I may finish strong. Be determined that you would finish strong. You know, there's a lot of discouragement in the world, and the Bible has a lot to say about being encouraged and taking courage. Courage is a Bible word. Courage is a God word. And courage basically means standing strong during a time of uncertainty. You've got to stand strong. You've got to stand with the word of the Lord. See the church. You've got to remain plugged into your church. Uh, be part of your church. Be found in church. Be Know that God is working on you through your local church. And I really want to talk to you about courage and under that finishing strong. Now, every one of us, face discouragement. And I said us because that includes me. And even though I'm a pastor, it doesn't mean that pastors are immune from discouragement. In fact, pastors probably have more opportunity to be discouraged than anybody else. But we have had to learn to take heart in the word of the Lord. 
we put our hope and we put our trust in the Lord. So let, let me look a little bit, uh, instead of looking at courage, let's look a little bit about what discourages mean and what does it mean to walk in discouragement. Well, everyone faces discouragement. And discouragement really means to de it, it deprive of confidence, hope, or spirit. It means to hamper by discouragement, to deter, to try to prevent by expressing disapproval or raise objections. And have we seen that in our world, in our country, politically? We've seen it happening over and over again. There's fighting and all these things happening in the world and even within political parties, leaders being thrown out. And because there's so much stuff in the world that can feed the mind negativity that leads to discouragement. And I want to tell you something, there's a real battle for your mind. There is a real battle for your mind and your thoughts, and you've got to take captive every thought. And, uh, and if you've not got this thing I've written called Battle for the Mind, I'm sure Andrew may have some that he could point you to. Pick up a copy, go online, you could download it off of Amazon, you could get it. But it's a real battle for the mind going on, and a real moment of discouragement that will face every Christian and every believer because we've got to understand the word of the Lord. So we've got to remember that discouragement is a real thing. Discouragement would follow you into lockdown and will come out with you in lockdown. Discouragement would follow you to on your holiday, help you pack your bags and be there waiting for you when you come home. Discouragement will be there no matter what race you are, what language you speak, how far to the ends of the earth you flee, there's always going to be a moment to be discouraged. Now, you've got to remember this, that discouragement, to live in discouragement, is not God's plan for your life. I'll say that again. To live in discouragement is not God's plan for our lives. God wants us to finish strong. He wants us to take courage. Or the Bible says, take heart. He is the overcomer. The overcomer is living in you. And when we know God is on our side, we are able to overcome. Not just overcome, but exceedingly, abundantly, above all, we can do it in God. You know, discouragement is one of those things. It can even hide behind an amen and a smile. But we've got to learn to be real with God and let the Holy Spirit flood our hearts. You've got to stop your mind determining how you live. You've got to learn to manage your thoughts. That's right, you heard me. Manage your thoughts. We've got to learn that the battle for the mind is real, but also you've got to manage the way you think. You don't have to believe what you think. You know, one of the signs of maturity in a Christian, a mature believer, is that they're able to manage their thought life well. No matter what thought pops into your life, into your mind, it does not mean you have to live it. Let me say this. Your mind will lie to you. Your mind would cause you to read into things. Oh, those people don't like me. No one likes me. No one in my job likes me. Oh, I feel this way. You ever had the feeling of symptoms and you didn't have it at all? Because your mind would lie to you. And that's why the Bible says we've got to take captive every thought. Learn to manage your mind. It's a sign of maturity, believer. When a believer learns to manage their mind, they live a better life. With this whole wave of COVID and things that are happening globally and in the United Kingdom, we've seen the rise of mental health. And basically, because people can't live with their own thoughts. They, they struggle. They dwell on the past. They dwell on things behind. And they're not finishing strong. They're not taking courage. And these are even believers. They're not finishing for the Lord because they keep looking back and dwelling on the things we shouldn't dwell on. Learn to manage your thought life properly. Learn to take inventory over your mind. The Bible says, take captive every thought and make it submissive to the word of the Lord. Learn to read your Bible. You know, one of the things I do is I leave my Bible open by the side of my bed. So the last thing I see before I go to bed is the scriptures. I read it. And the first thing I read as I wake up is the scriptures. That helps the mind. Now, Talking about discouragement, let me give you a little bit of a bit of wisdom here in how we finish strong. All of us want to finish strong and all of us want to take courage. Do not make a permanent decision in a temporary situation. Let me say this again. Do not make a permanent decision during a temporary situation. I know it's lockdown. I know you might be tier two, tier three, 
Some of us have tears running out of our eyes with all these tears. Listen, these things in the light of eternity are temporary. Don't make a decision that in this temporary moment. Don't walk out of church in your mind. You heard what I said. Don't walk out of church in your mind. Some people now, they're not, obviously because church are online and you're watching this online, you could choose what time you watch it. doesn't have to be Sunday morning at 10.30. You could watch it Monday. You could skip Sunday altogether and go out or do whatever you want to do. Listen, that's a sign of backsliding. Take the time that is allocated for the Lord and make that time holy. Tune into your service. Tune in, see the church to your time. That is your time. When you have your Bible study, when you have your online services, when you gather in Zoom, everybody in Cedar Church should be there because as a church, you want to finish strong. Now, we've got to learn that making a decision in a temporary place would lead to a heartache. Do not make that decision. Philippians chapter 3. Let me read it with you. Philippians chapter 3. And verses 12 to 14 says it this way. I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection, look at scripture, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus, look at the word, underline it, circle it in your scripture, but I focus on one thing. What is that? Here's the key, forget in the past. Forget in the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. You know, as Christians and as believers, I use the words interchangeably because there are some Christians who are not believers. You know, just because they tick a box that they're a Christian doesn't mean that they're a believer. We are believers. We are disciples of the Lord. You know, believers and Christians, they're all both in churches and at different levels of where they're at. But do you know that some of us, some people could only remember in the past all the bad things, all the hurts, all the problems, how many times they were sick, how many times they've been in the hospital, how many times they can do this. Oh, and we look back and we can never look forward. Listen, Paul is trying to tell you, forget the past. Don't look back, but look forward to what lies ahead. In verse 14, it goes on to read, I press on to reach the end of the race. See, it's finishing strong. It's taking courage. I press on to the end of the race to receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is what? Calling us. See the church, he's calling you. You know, he's called you as a church. You've got wonderful pastors and leaders, very gifted and talented people, talent dripping off of them. But do you know you could have the best leader and still be in a miserable situation? Because it's not the pastor's fault. It is not the leader's fault. Listen, it is not even Birmingham's fault. It's not even the people around you's fault. God is on your side. You've got to take yourself out of the pit. You've got to take yourself out of discouragement and take courage. Take courage in the midst of adversity. Take courage in the midst of a storm. Take courage in the midst of lockdown. Come out of lockdown stronger with your walk with God. Come out of lockdown closer to the Lord than closer to the worry and the cares of this world. Don't let your thought life rule you. Learn to make your thought life submitted to the word of the Lord. Let the word of the Lord wash your mind, wash your thoughts, live by God's word. And if you do that, you would finish strong. You would be like the Apostle Paul, finishing the ends of the race, stretching to receive that which God has given you because God has called you, see the church, for great things. Your church is going to do great things in the city of Birmingham. You've got to believe that God is on your side. You cannot look back to the things that are seemingly not working. You've got to press on to the things of the Lord. Listen, we've got to break out of this fast track mentality that, oh, it should have happened by now. You know, this person did this by now. Why isn't it not happening by now? You know, don't compare yourselves to God's, to other people in God's plan. You know, if you have kids or had kids yourself that are grown up, you know, if you've had more than one kid, you would know this, that some develop faster than the others. Some walked faster. Some nappy trained quicker. Some learned to eat certain things. Some kicked the ball further than the other one did at that age. Because their children, they develop at different ages, different ways. Doesn't mean one child is better or more loved than the other. You love them both or how many you have. It's the same thing with churches. They develop at different paces. God is different. Give us call and different giftings. And we've not to compare ourselves with others. We've got to remain focused. 
Remain focused on the things of the Lord. Remain focused on your finish line. Run in your lane. I'll say that again. See the church. Run in your lane. You know, if you ever look at uh, races, especially within the Olympics, and a few years ago, I was watching Trinidad and Tobago, the mighty country of Trinidad and Tobago, running in the Olympics. And I think it was in one of uh, either America or Canada. And they were running and they came third in the relays. But when they had done the checking, the officials were checking the rule, one of the countries, I believe it was Canada, which had came second, they realized that one of them had stepped over the line and they got disqualified and it moved Trinidad and Tobago to second place. You know, because they got distracted. And it's so easy that even in the Christian walk, we can get distracted. We could get distracted by the things around us. We could get distracted by the country we live in. We could get politically distracted. We could even get, can I say it, race distracted. We're distracted about our race more so than the things of the Lord, our ethnicity, I should say. We've got to learn to put our eyes on eternity, things that really matter. And when really those things matter for the Lord, everything in this world, the Bible would remind us, and that song goes dim in the light of God's glory and grace. We've got to learn to turn our eyes on Jesus. You know why? Because He wants you to finish strong. He wants you to finish strong. He wants you to say, well done. He wants to say this to you. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. What will God say about you when you enter glory? What will God say to you when you enter his glory? No one knows the time or the hour. No one knows when we're going to be called home. And you know, in these days, these are the last days. These are the birth and pains, the Bible call it, of the last days. And, and the love of many, the Bible says, will grow cold. We've seen people in our church grow cold. Once they were fired for the Lord, you'd see them every service. Now they can't even tune in to a live stream. Their life has begun so busy being locked down. Isn't that incredible? Because it's fulfilling scripture. In the last day, the love of many will grow cold. Make sure that your fire don't go out. Make sure you keep putting wood on your fire. Keep your walk with the Lord uh, fired up. Keep your things with the Lord full in faith. We've got to learn to finish well and finish strong. You know, none of us like waiting. And waiting, for me personally, is a headache. I am, my wife would tell you that I could be the most impatient person. I know you find it hard to believe looking at at me, but I could be the most impatient person there is. I see waiting as pointless. But do you know waiting is very biblical? I, I, I hate to admit it, but waiting, sometimes God would allow us to go through a season of waiting to develop things in us that there is no other way it would happen unless by waiting. Isaiah chapter 40, and I'm sure you know the scripture, but I'm going to read it to you. Isaiah chapter 40, 28, 31. The New King James Version says it this way. And I love this scripture. Verse 20, it says, Have you not known? And it starts off with some questions. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. And here's his key now. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint. Look at this. Even you shall faint and, and be weary, and young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait upon the Lord, look at the scripture, underline it. But those who wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and shall not faint. Waiting can be discouraging, but during these times, our strength is refreshed. During a time of waiting, God refreshes us again. He strengthens us. He brings that power and that grace and that majesty again, that once again, we learn to find strength in God. We learn to wait on God. We renew our walk with God, our moment with God. You know, the whole world has been shut down for so long. The whole countries of borders have been closed and Hospitals and fear of being overrun. And, and a lot of us 
a lot of people have said they wanted to always their dream was to have more time to work at home. Now, very few people want to work at home. Productivity is down. Things are not as the way they should be because what we thought we needed was not good for us. But when we find ourselves waiting, we should be waiting on the Lord. It should be that our walk with God or the old-fashioned word, our tryst, you know, it's like when somebody would sneak off to meet with a boyfriend or a girlfriend, the old-fashioned, old English word was tryst, your tryst moment. And that moment is when you would spend with the Lord. You would learn to develop that relationship with the Lord, that your strength, that that waiting moment is not, waiting time is not wasted time. It's waiting on the Lord to believe that God's going to open things for you. See the church, there are great days coming ahead of you. You're not going to be a nowhere. You're not going to be a church that never achieves. God has already set in motion the things that he's going to bring for you. There is a champion living in you. There's an overcomer residing in you. And God has put your pastors, your leaders in your church. You've got a fantastic church with a long history of people who believe the Lord. Listen. God's going to do mighty things, great things in that church. We've got to learn what it is to finish strong and how to deal with seasons of discouragement. You know, as I share this word with you, I want you to, to make note of some things of how do we deal with a season of discouragement. Number one, remember those who perse persevere to the end will be saved. The race is not won by the swift or the strong, but by the one who perseveres. We've got to persevere. We've got to stick with it. Stick with God's plan. Stick with the church. Stick with reading the word. Stick with worship. Worship the Lord. Give God our highest praise. He's our risen Savior. He's our master. He's our healer. He's our comforter. We've got to learn what it is to, pre to persevere to the end. That we're focused on the prize. See the church, you're going to finish strong. God's going to put His grace upon you. There's going to be a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon your church where people would come to know God as King. And I declare it prophetically over your church that there's going to be a move of God like you've never seen it before. Even in the city of Birmingham, God's going to clean up the streets and clean up the ways that there's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost that He's going to set up that church, set up your church for great things ahead. Do not be distracted or be discouraged, the word of the Lord will come to you to say today, to say, focus on finishing the race and finish strong. You know, as I'm saying that the Lord dropped in my spirit, do not be distracted by what everybody else is doing in other churches or even across the world. Remain focused in your lane, see the church. Remain focused in your lane. Do the things that God has called you to do, that you do so well. God's going to elevate and build you up and bring greater days in your life. So the race is not finished by the swift or the strong, but by those who persevere. Number two is take it step by step, day by day. Every line upon line, the Bible says, precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. You've got to take little victories, little Amen moments. You should be saying amen now. You should be saying hallelujah, bringing the word of the Lord. Let, let, it, let it be said that you learn to plant your feet well in the house of the Lord. The third one uh, is uh, under, sorry, undertaken it step by step. Psalms 37, 23. It says the step of a good man is ordered by the Lord. He delights in his way. The third one is never give up. Never give up. Never, never, never give up. You know, so many people start things that don't finish. And, and there are some things that we start that we do actually need to finish. But when it comes to the word of the Lord and it comes to scripture and it comes to doing what God's called us to do, never give up. The best is yet to come. Listen, I believe it and I declare it over your church. The best days are ahead of you. Your worst days are behind you. Better days are coming. Come on, say it with me, see the church. Better days are coming. Let's declare it one more time. Better days are coming. Say it out loud. Better days are coming. Declare it over your family, your children. Declare it over your pastors. Declare it over your building. Better days are coming. Hey, we're going into winter, but soon spring's going to be around. There's always a winter. There's always a dark moment. And in that moment, it brings us together as families to rely on the Lord. Never, ever give up. 
during the time like these we are facing, this is a time you focus. Don't sort of think, oh, I'm tired, I had enough, and it seems like this lockdown thing will never end, this COVID thing driving me crazy, and all these things that are happening. Listen, God has a plan for you, and nothing in this world can stop that plan from being achieved. Learn to manage your thought life, manage your mind, put scriptures in your mind, learn the promises. Do you know there's over seven thousand promises in the Bible and it's all yours. They all belong to you. Learn the promises of the Lord. The Bible says the promises of the Lord are twofold. What are they? They're yes and they're amen. Learn your promises. Learn your amen moments. Declare it by the word of the Lord. Do not be shut down. Do not be broken down. Do not be discouraged, but take courage. There is an overcomer in you. See the church. There's great things that are happening. The fourth one is understand your blessing is guaranteed once you're ready. Be like the wise virgins. You're ready with your lamp, ready with the fire burning, ready to receive God has best us. Don't go to sleep. Don't coil up like the foolish virgins and they miss the bridegroom. They miss the hour of God's visitation. See the church, time to wake up yourself. Time to get purpose filled. Time to realize that God is going to do something fantastic in your city, fantastic in your church. It's more than numbers. It's more than just even a building. It's more than even two buildings. It's what God desires to do in you is greater than a man can do. There's going to come greater days with your children, greater days in, in your future. If you would only trust in God and believe for his fullness, believe for his best, there's going to be great things that will come. Number five, strength comes while waiting in God's presence. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. The mountains melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. You know, our own mountains that are in our mind and our own mountains of things that we are, speaks of limitations, of things that we cannot achieve and impossibilities. God wants those mountains to be broken down. He wants to bring better days in your life. Listen, you've sometimes got to go through the fire to be purified. See the church? You've got to go through the fire. You've got to go through the fire. Jonah had to be in a whale. Eh? Listen, you've got to understand this. Even Daniel had to be in a lion's den. Even Jesus stayed in a grave for three days. Sometimes you just got to go through something. But if you're going through it, go through it by the word of the Lord. Listen, hardship can unlock your potential. Write this down. Moments of hardship can actually bring my potential. What do you mean? Well, think about Jesus. Think about Jesus. No crown without a cross. No king without looking after sheep. That was David. No governor without being first put into slavery. Who was that? Joseph. No ruler without facing the lion's den. Who was that? Daniel. Sometimes we've got to go through, believe us, some tough moments. Sometimes we've got to go through the fire. Sometimes we've got to go through deep water. Sometimes we've got to face the storm. Sometimes we've got to face moments in life where we feel like everything is against us because God has already set us up to finish strong, to finish well. There's a great day of courage coming. There's a great day of outpouring of the Holy Ghost coming. And when we understand who God is, that God sits on the throne, He is not defeated. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning. He's the great I am. He's the ruler. He is the one who has overcome. He is the one who sits on the throne. No one has locked Him down. No one has shut Him up. Jesus is still ruler. God is still our champion. He's still our King. We we have the Holy Ghost that can overcome and give us that power, the word of the truth in our lives. If we understand who is within us, then we would know the great things God has set us up. Scripture says, greater is he that's within us than he that's within this world. See the church, I want to tell you something. Persevere. See the church, I want to tell you something. Take courage. I want to tell you something. Finish strong. Finish for the word of the Lord. Let the word of the Lord be in your life. Let the word of the Lord be in your spirit. Let the word of the Lord map out your future. Declare the word of the Lord around your city. As you go and you come, or are you home walking up and down, or you're going for your exercise, declare the word of the Lord. For it's the word of the Lord that will bring you through the storm. It's the word of the Lord that will help you navigate through every storm, every difficulty. Learn to trust in God. What does scripture say? Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses, 
but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. You know, as I'm sharing this word, I believe it with all my heart that God has a great plan for your beautiful church. God has a great plan for your beautiful city, that he desires to pour out his spirit over your city again, that the streets and the highways and the hedges, that people would come in and know Jesus as Lord. Even those who are watching this right now, I want to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. Will you join me as I pray for you? You're watching this broadcast today and you're, you, someone has sent you a link and you're watching this and maybe God is tugging on the strings of your heart and you said, you know what, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. Would you join me in prayer? Just close your eyes for a moment and bow your heads and we're going to pray and just repeat these words. And if you really mean it, God's going to come and dwell in your heart. Let's say these words. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus on this earth to die for me. And on the third day, he rose again. Jesus, I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong. Forgive me of my sin and turn my life around. I accept you in my heart and I confess you as Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. You know, if you've said that prayer and you've meant it, God wants to, God has begun to live in you. And if you, there's some numbers or maybe somebody will come on after this and give you more information, but you could find out more about his beautiful church, Cedar Church, and you can, uh, someone will send you a Bible or make connection with you. You've got to keep your walk with the Lord because you've started this journey. There's going to be greater days. See the church family that are watching this. Maybe you're struggling with discouragement. And I know, boy, you think, wow, there's so many people who are discouraged. But maybe it's specific to you. Maybe it's specific to this moment when this word has come out. Would you raise your hands if you are struggling in yourself, just in your home or wherever you are? Uh, if you're married, take, take the person's hand next to you. Um, and maybe you're struggling. You're struggling in your mind. You're struggling. It's a battle for the mind. Like I encourage you, get the cards and pray through it. But maybe you're struggling in your mind. Would you raise your hands? I want to pray for you right now. Father, every hand that is raised, I bring them before you. I bring them before your throne. Father, I declare that you are our healer, not only the healer of our bodies, but the healer of our mind. And I just pray, God, that your grace would rest upon everyone who's listening to this, those with their hands that are raised right now, that you touch them and touch their mind and their family. Let them know that God is real. And I just pray in this moment, Lord, that they would learn to manage their thought life and take captive those thoughts and present them before you in the name of Jesus. Everybody say amen and amen. Thank you so much, Cedar Church, for allowing us this moment to share with you. My wife and I love you guys. We love your pastors and your church. And we look forward to the day we could visit you face to face and declare God's word. But let me leave you with those words. Be encouraged. God is on your side. Finish strong. Take courage. God is ahead of you. Amen and amen.